Hello, welcome back to Learn Astrology with Mary. My name's Mary English, and this week we have a fantastic guest. We have Gregory Rosek, and he's going to be talking about retrograde planets. Now, in 2014, Gregory entered a competition with the Astrological Association, and it was an essay contest. And he submitted an article called People with Many Retrogrades. And it's all about the retrograde planets. And in the contest, the essay contest, um, he was awarded a prize. So today we're going to learn about them. One, because we've got a whole bunch of them coming up this month. And the other, just the subject itself, is very interesting. So welcome, Gregory. How are you feeling today? What's the weather like over in Poland at the moment? Uh, hello, Mary. Um... I'm feeling quite great because uh, I'm able to speak with you. Uh, weather is quite warm here, mm -hmm. uh, so I'll take a walk after this. So should we start or some preliminary uh, information from you? Um, the, the, well, we're going to be starting by you telling me exactly, you know, what is a retrograde planet. So if you can just tell us a little bit about, so just quite, um, use it into easy terms, when a planet goes retrograde, exactly what is happening to it. And can you tell us not so much too much about the astronomy, but in astrology, when a planet does that, how, how does it all happen? What's behind it all? What's the important thing we need to know? So, um... Yes, like you're saying, astronomy is quite complicated uh, and it's one of those things, parts of astrology or reading a chart where uh, you need to use them every time like uh, to see because planet is either going in the uh, usual direction, which is called going direct. forward, forward yeah. or direct. And sometimes they go retrograde. So it seems like if we would look at the sky... Uh, at night uh, and compare the planet's path to the stars, we would see that all oh, suddenly Mars is going the other direction than it used to go or what, when the sun goes, or the moon goes. Um, so it's very weird uh, visual phenomenon. So a uh, visual phenomenon in uh, ancient astronomy and astrology were one of the most important in terms of interpretation. Mm -hmm. And if you do uh, an interpretation of, a, of any astrological charts, you will usually start with cookbooks like, whoa, Mars in Virgo means this, when it's in this, this house, it means that, etc. Like, oh, this Mercury in here shows me I'm good with travel, but the aspect says not good with travel, so people get confused, etc. Retrogradation is one of those elements that usually... Uh, change most of the interpretations to something weirder or stranger yeah and is it so, necessarily negative when a planet goes retrograde because everybody gets quite negative about mercury retrograde but i always say to people when it's retrograde you just need to redo something rethink reorganize just stick the word re in front does the same apply to all the other planets as well well uh, the perfect Keywords for uh, retrograde planets come from uh, Salih the Bisher. He's an Arabic, uh, Arabian astrologer from uh, 9th century. And he just gave a short passage with just least four words that perfectly uh, show what uh, the ancient and traditional astrologers usually seen a uh, planet that go retrograde. So the four words are disobedience, collapse, repetition, and disagreement. All right. And other astrologers, for example, Valens uh, from uh, ancient astrology, uh, second century, uh, says retrograde planets shows delays in expectations. So whatever you expect, because the planet was going forward, but then it turned its back and started to, you know, going uh, backwards. So your expectations are not meet, or you will have to wait much more when the planet turns back to its normal uh, forward direction. Also, all the actions get delayed. So if you uh, expect something to happen, but the planet that is responsible for this goes retrograde, it can either not happen or, or like with Mercury retrograde, you will hear like every um, weird thing about communication failing or, or stuff like that. Profits also are delayed, so uh, if you start with uh, something with retrograde planet, uh, then 
What, like start a business, you mean, yeah? Yeah, for example, Saturn is a planet that is um, uh, from the classical planets, uh, mostly uh, influential over businesses. So if you start a business or work with Saturn retrograde, it might be very difficult to keep this job or mm. like to uh, not not get, uh, I don't know, insane or want to quit it, like uh, things like that. Or if you have Saturn retrograde in your birth chart, then uh, keeping a uh, one job, nine to five job would be a really struggle if this like Saturn is um, a, um, quite important in your chart. Oh, cool. Uh, Others would say like it's generally difficulty and misfortune to have retrograde planets. So it, this is classical view. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's all this is just the classical version of uh, cookbooks, which mm. means that it's just the one of the downsides. So if you just have a planet retrograde, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it's like terrible for you. Okay. But if you have planet that is retrograde and in bad aspect or and in um, uh, bad house or the sign of its fall, like some more um, more components, uh, then we usually read it as um, non-promising, troublesome and disappointing. So something that will make you very nervous and anger at the world. Got uh, you. Yeah, but this, just, this is just the one part of this. Um, because uh, we are dealing here with materialistic views. So in terms of uh, mundane words, doing action, achieving goals, retrogrades are uh-uh. Mm. Like, because, because it's just abnormal situation, going uh, against the grain, etc. So uh, you, you are supposed to expect that uh, things will uh, not happen as, um, as expected. Mm -mm. Mm, so, for example, uh, the other part is more spiritual. And in modern astrology, you will... Uh, you will learn uh, a lot of people try to uh, stress out that, yeah, these planets are more spiritual. It actually comes at least from since the uh, 8th century because Mashallah uh, has um, shown that uh, he uh, also thinks of retrograde planets as uh, showing more spirituality because of a uh, planet that goes direct um, is a normal planet and normal planets were seen as uh, parts of the soul that descend from the sky, uh, from heaven and mm -hmm. uh, uh, descend down to earth and the earth, you know, with this material world. So they lose their um, godliness and become just uh, lower, uh, lower entities, so to say. So if the planet turns uh, around, mm -hmm. it's like if it was be, it would be a, uh, um, um, going up again, like ascending. So it, so the uh, person loses, or a planet uh, loses a focus or a goals that are materialistic or mm -hmm. mundane day to day, mm -hmm. and gets more focus on um, spirituality, uh, things that are you know more like about its soul, etc. Not ah. necessarily, not necessarily religion, but more of this kind of like disconnection with the uh, mundane world. Like they sure. just, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, because uh, I've got Mercury retrograde myself, so I do know what some planets are like, and I'm always waffling on about it because it means that I don't learn in a regular way. And I've taught, like yourself, I've taught myself astrology, but you've, you've got a mm -hmm. diploma as well. I don't even have that. But I've taught myself astrology because I couldn't have been taught it by someone else. I had to learn it myself, which is why yeah. I teach it for people to learn themselves. I don't teach astrology. I help people learn for themselves because everybody's different. But I've only found that out from having... Um, um, the Mercury retrograde and it wasn't until I understood astrology it's like ah, light bulb moment that that was why I couldn't I was just shit at school excuse my French but yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay that's interesting I like the the disobey one that sounds nice yeah <laughs> so uh if, if if I just add another note for this uh spirituality uh, thing I I actually think it uh, ties very nicely to the word itself uh, so maybe I will just tell you uh, what the word actually means because yeah. the Engl English word retrograde mm -hmm. or uh, so going retrograde or the noun for this uh, phenomenon retrogradation mm -hmm. come directly from Latin uh, uh, retrogradus, uh, which means 
uh, retrograde. Uh, retro means like uh, uh, backwards or reversing and gradus is just a step. So like uh, when you walk, you make steps. So it literally means uh, going backwards or uh, going with your steps backwards, something like that. So uh, um, the other translation that the scholars use is uh, regression. So Mercury is in regression, something like that, or that is retracting its steps instead yeah. of moving forwards. So mm -hmm. I would, I think this would be better words for you to use in English because they mean something instead of like just retrograde and nobody knows what it actually means. Mm -hmm. But the Latin retrogradus uh, or, uh, or noun retrogradatio uh, come from actually uh, just strictly translating from the Greek. Mm -hmm. And the Greek original term uh, from the ancient Greek or Hellenistic astrology is actually a bit deeper mm -hmm. in meaning. Uh, the noun for a uh, planet that is retrograde is anapodismos. Mm -hmm. So it can, it's again, consists of two parts. Ana is just the um, prefix that is here means backwards again. Mm -hmm. And podismos comes from pause or uh, version of this word in declination is podos, feet, so you might know about podology, you know, the doctors who deal with your feet, etc. So mm. it b basically means something with your feet that goes back reverse, so the meaning is the same. And, but if you dig deeper, it, it has um, mm, more than one meaning, because Latin retrogradus Mm -hmm. Almost 90% of the time is just reserved for uh, planets or stars. Okay. But uh, the Greek term is just the usual term for like uh, walking backwards. But uh, the other meanings are, uh, let me read that, um, uh, make a step backwards to return. For, it's used for re re reoccurring uh, uh, events. And in astrology, retrograde planets often show that something will happen more than once. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. It's uh, maybe it's connected with the thing that and when planet goes, uh, you know, goes direct, then goes retrograde, uh, passing through the same degrees it already has, then mm -hmm. turns direct again and passing the same degrees for the third time. Yes, so, that's a thing that a lot of my students probably don't know already, that a planet just doesn't go retrograde and then go forward again. In It might go yeah. backwards a bit to a certain degree and then go direct and then make a further retrograde. It's like, oh, you know, this is something mm -hmm. that, that we probably haven't discussed anything on the, on the podcast. So it's really exciting yeah. hearing from the expert that knows all about it, because I don't. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, so it, mm. So this part of astronomy is very important like, because we visually see what the planet is doing. It goes, mm -hmm. for example, to 30 uh, degree of, let's say, areas mm -hmm. and then turns retrograde. So it goes 99th degree, 98th, etc. and will go several degrees, almost reaching the beginning of the sign. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after some weeks or months or however, whichever planet is it, uh, how long it takes, then it will go direct again and mm -hmm. will pass again like 10th, 11th, 13th, and so it has to catch up. So every time a planet makes a, um, a circle around the zodiac, when it goes mm -hmm. retrograde, it slows down, it has to, you know, make a loop in the sky to uh, catch up, go back to some things it was already passing or transiting, and uh, do them again when direct. So it's very uh, non... Um, like people want to think to go you know, instant, you know, we have a business plan, we do this and that, but now, whoa, we have a loop, we have to go back, uh, some papers, like we're missing something, oh my God, someone said uh, they can't give us uh, the, the funds or things like that. So it's all like retrograde thinking. Yeah, and a lot of people get that sensation sometimes when they start something. When I've done readings for clients before now and they go, you know, I've, I've tried, I feel as if I've taken... 10 steps forwards and 14 steps backwards that's the sensation that you'd be getting with the retrograde planet like you're really progressing really well with your homework or as like you say your job and then all of a sudden you're you're not moving forwards because where do we get the sensation of moving forwards from it's strange isn't it because us as humans we don't move forwards there's no such thing as time we've given it a thing but yeah oh wow okay uh-huh 
Okay, so uh, let's continue with the uh, the Greek word because it's even even deeper in the meaning. Mm. Uh, uh, Re-examination. So this is another keyword that is key we could use to retrograde, and it's one of it, it's either positive or negative. Mm -hmm. Because if planet goes retrograde, we, especially Mercury, we are supposed to like re-examine these uh, details or documents or information or our uh, devices because something might need a revision or there's an error that we are supposed to change before we can go forward with the stuff. Mm -hmm. Another meaning, uh, call back and question. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so it's int the Greeks were very particular with the words. And if you study some words, uh, of course, like you might uh, um, overemphasize something. But uh, if you see the richness and you can also see this in the actual interpretations, then uh, it all makes sense why, why someone... Uh, would see the planet making a loop uh, uh, in, in the sky and think mm -hmm. that it is revising things, that uh, uh, it makes some delays, uh, etc. Because it isn't in reality actually going backwards like a car going into reverse, is it? It's because of the speed between the two planets. Because I think somebody described it to me once was that if you had a train at the station and another train came past, the train that's stationary at the station, or, or if they take off, one looks as if as if it's going backwards. I think it's about speed. That's it. So if one train's doing 30 miles an hour and the other's doing four, 40 as it goes past, it looks as if this one's going backwards. It's not. It's just traveling at a slower speed. Is It's not the, the planet isn't literally going backwards, is it? It's just mm -hmm. the speed between the two. Is that correct? Well, actually, so, okay, so we, so we try to make a very uh, astronomy one-on-one -on, -one on retrograde. Okay. Which, at, at best, you, you uh, your listeners, uh, if they really want to understand it, uh, just Google some uh, astronomy uh, models of retrograde planets, like three, five minutes, few videos of that, and you will see it. Mm -hmm. um, but let's try to uh, say it uh, in some with some simplification so uh the planet go around the sun all the planets go around the sun with actually the same speed so this right. is not the matter of speed but because they uh, uh travel around the uh the sun sorry mm -hmm. uh with inside the orbits and each planet is further away so the uh each orbit is they, we have concentric orbits and the further away the planet is uh from from the Earth, we will see that it takes so much more time to travel through the zodiac from our perspective because mm. uh, it's you know further away. So it's same like if a car passes uh, be be before your face, driving 30 miles uh, per hour, it will be zoom. But yeah. if it's you know some train a kilometer away, it will keep traveling. Uh, and you will keep seeing it like it, you might even think it's like not moving at all. Uh, so, uh, so it's not the speed, but mm -hmm. it's there are actually two kinds of uh, different uh, explanations, or um, no, maybe it's not the best wording, but we should divide planets in two sets. Mm -hmm. We have the Earth and we have the interior planets, so the Mercury and Venus, go which are within the orbit of uh, the Earth. Yes. So they always uh, travel, uh, circle the sound, and if we look at the horoscopes of the sky, they are never more uh, further away from the sun than uh, Mercury. Actually, it's um, it's either in your the, own the, side the, the, or on either side of it, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, if you were born yeah. a Scorpio, your Mercury can only ever be Libra on one side, or yes, uh, exactly. Sagittarius on the other. Okay, I heard. So it never moves more than. But Venus can be a bit different to that. But again, yeah, it can't, Venus yeah. Venus can go one and a half sign away, That's like, it. Mm. Uh, from the sun. But it depends. You 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 really have to uh, either like have your astrological programs or ephemeris because it's like between twenty uh, between fifty degrees and thirty eight for Venus, and fifteen to uh, I think twenty four if I remember correctly. So it's a bit different because you know the orbit of the Earth is also moving around. So like this astronomy is a bit complicated. Okay. But with uh, Mercury and Venus, it's uh, special uh, because we always see we always see the sun. Mm -hmm. and Mercury and Venus next to it, and we always see either they are going in front of the Sun, the half mm -hmm. of their orbit, or behind the Sun. 
So when they go in front of the sun, they are retrograde. When they go behind the sun, they are uh, uh, moving forward. Oh, okay. Meaning, when you have, uh, when the Venus, for example, or Mercury uh, pass through the sun, you know, it's a conjunction and you're not sure which one. So, uh, mm. but when you have the Venus ahead of the sun in the maximum point, which is, let's say, 38 degrees, mm -hmm. and it was, it's actually a station, so it will slow down, um, uh, you know, as, yeah, it seems so from Earth, mm -hmm. and will start to go retrograde. And you can know that because it went uh, stationary or make this station before changing direction because when it was in front of the sun in, in Zodiac. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it has to go uh, backwards because it can't go more forward because it ah. reached uh, the maximum of its orbit. And when, gotcha. you, when you see it's uh, the most far away from the sun behind it, Mm -hmm. and the station happens, you know, it has to go forward because it, the sun is moving on and the planet has to catch up because there is no much more orbit to go further away. Mm -hmm. So these two planets are, are, are very special. And when, uh, when they, uh, they are very close to the sun, so, between, uh, so uh, retrogradation is actually half of the orbit. So one side of the sun, they are retrograde. One side mm -hmm. of the sun, they are... Uh, direct, but mm -hmm. within say 50 degrees to the sun, they go combust because they disappear in, in, inside the sun. So when you have planet that is at the same time retrograde, so in front of the sun mm -hmm. and uh, invisible, mm -hmm. uh, very interesting things happen, uh, especially if this planet is uh, your ascendant ruler. But um, but in any anyways, Mercury and Venus are always important. Uh, and um, if there is any connection with the job or a vocation, so uh, if it's an uh, angular planet, so it's in the first, sec uh, sorry, first, uh, tenth, or even seventh or fourth house, so in other words, it's angular houses, especially in the tenth house, so uh, relating to career, mm. uh, but this person who has uh, such uh, Mercury or Venus, or especially if both, mm. uh, is um, my my uh, my favorite um, description symbolic for this is like uh, imagine that you are uh, behind a cloud yeah. and be below this cloud there's a maze a labyrinth and people want to go from one side to the other side and then go through the labyrinth and spend like ages there and like go stupid but you are like just behind and you can see like you could just jump from this uh, 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 cloud uh, to the end mm -hmm. but uh, if you so so such people uh, will usually uh, have uh, very uh, very insightful uh, business skills where whatever uh, company they go they bah 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 and they like know everything better than everyone and everyone is like oh my god how did you do it etc but um, there's a catch as soon as you tell them what you actually did because this planet is retrograde and invisible, mm -hmm. people would think, no, that's stupid, that's crazy, you're an idiot. And they will just, uh, you know, come with torches uh, and just make you uh, even leave the job because how they will just make a hell for you. Because if what, what seems for them to be different, they mm -hmm. think it's stupid, idiotic, uh, uh, like you're, you're some retarded person, like no chance you are either lying or it was just a luck if you did what you did and did these are this wonderful results. So even though the company becomes to strive, etc., they fire such a person and mm -hmm. then the uh, five people has to come to make this person job and uh, even though uh, the, uh, they can't keep up uh, with, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, you know, uh, gain they had. This person. Uh, so, such okay. so such people would have uh, such experience. If it's not a job, it can be you know, rented with family or whatever, but if your planet is retrograde and combust, so invisible, mm -hmm. the, the best advice I always give in for my clients is just do your thing, you know better, don't listen to these people who just go through this maze because you know it's stupid, but don't <laughs> tell them what you did, don't let them show at your hands, uh -huh. just like be 
yeah, I'm just like the secret person. I have my secrets or whatever. It's very tr strange, difficult. I spent hours on that, even though like you just come up with, you know, the resolution or, or the idea how to do it. Uh, yeah. So do so, they have unusual ways of doing things, people with retrograde planets? Because we're going to go on a minute and you're going to tell us a bit about how to recognize a retrograde planet. But is somebody who's got one, would they do things more differently to someone else? Is that what makes it different in a chart? Yeah, so we come, we come to the, uh, the key words from mm -hmm. Sal, disobedience, collapse, repetition, disagreement. So people, normal people will see this person that it, he has come here, came here, he's disobedient, he makes this company collapse, his ideas are outrageous, he just do some weird things over and over again instead of uh, our like way to do mm -hmm. Uh, he disagrees with us. He thinks he knows better, etc. So uh, everyone sees retrograde planets uh, as more or less weird, you know, depending on the chart, because uh, you can, you can have the planet no more normalized or more weird uh, through the other uh, elements of your chart. Okay. Mm. And you know, if you have it uh, retrograde and combust, there's at mm. least two elements of weirdness or uh, something like people think it's weird and they can't see so they can't uh, like grasp what you actually did so yeah you must be some kind of like weird game for them okay so this is uh, mercury and venus um, mm -hmm. and with the rest of the planets we can jump to, again to the uh, uh cars or uh, the trains analogy mm. so for every other planet except uh, uh, Sa uh mercury and venus uh, the earth is uh the uh most uh, inside orbit and the rest of the planet have the orbits outside. So imagine like you are driving in a car uh, and you have uh, the tracks that are all concentric circles. You are the inside circle, Mars is next to you and blah, 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 the next, the, the following planets. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are driving at the same speed, uh, but because of your, your orbit, your, your track is the shortest one, you will speed up and uh, pass uh, through uh, all, all these planets. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you are driving this car, you have the same speed as, for example, the Mars that is next to you driving in his red car, and mm -hmm. you are passing by him, and you look at your right window, and you, it seems to you that he is going uh, backwards for, for a moment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, until you, you, you uh, cap, uh, catch up and go another circle and meet him again, so would this be like if we did the analogy this would be like on a racetrack that would be the better yes, way of thinking yes, about yes, it yes, okay yes uh -huh. but but all the cars going the same the same the same speed yeah. and the tracks are far far away because the planets are not so close like in the just this uh, easy pictures like for 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 astronomy etc they just like oh my god so much away that uh, everything is like a slow train on, on the on the horizon so uh there is actually a very easy way to recognize uh, when the planet is retrograde, except for uh, Mercury and Venus, which we already covered. It's a bit difficult, but when you know when it, where it's stationing, you will know mm -hmm. what direction it changes. But with the other planets, because uh, uh, they are slower than the sun, it's the sun that uh, approaches this planet, pass uh, through them, and go further away. So... Uh, uh, it's very simple. If you imagine your sun is on the exactly bottom of a astrological chart or birth chart or whatever, mm -hmm. and any planet that is in the bottom half, so uh, um, half that has a sun in the middle of it, can't be retrograde, except you know for Venus and Mercury because they are different. Mm. Anything that is in the top part. So everything opposite the sun is always retrograde. So if you have a planet in opposition to the sun, mm -hmm. you can be sure it's retrograde. There is no other chance it's not. Really? So if you had Pluto opposition sun, then Pluto would be retrograde? Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. And then same thing, Mars opposition sun, then the Mars would yes, be retrograde. Yes, yes, yes. So wow, Mars... how long have I been doing astrology and I didn't know that? Sorry. Yeah, so yeah, so that's why I was doing the research because like nobody is showing this these pictures oh. or, or or if they mention it, it was not something that you oh aha uh -huh, it makes sense. It was very uh, too scientific and like mm -hmm. just briefly mentioned. <clears throat> 
So, for example, Mars is the closest to us, so it is retrograde only when it's uh, uh, actually the sign opposite the sun and about, uh, so imagine the sun in the middle of the opposition of the Mars and uh, one and a half sign each side of the opposition, mm -hmm. Mars will be retrograde. For right. Jupiter, it's much more because whenever it's between trine opposition and another trine, so between the two trines, it's uh, roughly retrograde. For Saturn, it's even a bit more. So uh, from Pluto, which is the more uh, more furthest away from the Sun, the arch for retrogradation is the the uh, the, the greatest because it it needs to be just 99 degrees away from the sun, so it's almost a square. It's a bit more than square. So if you have sun, um, it's at some point, and you imagine uh, a half uh, of this uh, astrological chart with the sun in the middle, mm -hmm. the Pluto anywhere in the other half, except for a few degrees on the on the edges, would mm -hmm. be always retrograde. So if you look at any chart, uh, find where the sun is, look uh, what planets are in the half uh, opposite mm -hmm. uh, to this planet, and uh, you can bet that most of them are retrograde. Mm. So that's how you easily eye on, uh, oh, this chart has been retrograde or not. Mm. Luckily, astro.com uh, astro makes it easy for us with uh, having little R next to each planet. But that's yeah. a good way to eyeball a chart, isn't it? If you're looking at things that are opposite. So is it always things that are opposite the sun or could you get something like a, I mean, excuse me for asking this, but I honestly don't know the answer. But say you had Mars opposition Jupiter, would there be a retrograde thing going on? Or is it just everything? Is no, opposite it's, the sun? it's right. this is the uh, solar cycle. So uh, oh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, the it's actually very similar to the moon because the moon makes the phases when it yeah. uh, goes around the sun. So it's the moon's relation to the sun mm -hmm. shows you if it's full, if it's new moon, if it's quarter, etc. And for retrograde planets, when they are close to the moon, con they conjoin the moon, mm -hmm. sorry, the sun, they get invisible. Mm -hmm. But when they are opposite, they get retrograde. So when, when I mentioned it's the same with like the moon, because mm -hmm. the moon, when it's opposite the sun, it's the brightest because the yeah. full moon. Yeah. Same with the planets when they are opposite the sun mm -hmm. or, or retrograde. So more than opposite the sun, just around the half uh, of the chart are opposite to the sun. Mm -hmm. They are the brightest and the opposition point is obviously the most bright because they are the closest to the Earth. Because, you know, remember that the, our car being the Earth passes next to the car of Mars, Saturn, etc. So we see the car is very shiny, but at the same time it goes reverse. So some people in India uh, interpreted uh, retrograde planets as uh, benefic or positive because they are bright. Okay. But we all remember the uh, dreadful keywords I, I was mentioning uh, for the retrogrades because of the loop. Like the loop might be like more more troublesome. So the light is again a thing that uh, makes this planet more spiritual, more mm -hmm. like uh, deep inside and have their own uh, understanding instead mm -hmm. of like uh, trying trying to blend in with the public. Right. Okay. Uh, so would these are be outlier type of people that might have. Say somebody had a lot of uh, retrograde plants. We are going to go on to somebody that does have that. They're not going to be normal inverted commas. So mm -hmm. You're not going to be sort of following the same as everybody. Yeah. Else. So um, there was one guy that made a statistic on a number of planets retrograde. His name was McCormick, and he did it in uh, either seventies or eighties. I think seventies, mm -hmm. and has done it for the. Uh, um, it was a part of 19th century and part of 20th century or something like that, which I stumbled upon when I was trying to find, has anyone ever written about many retrogrades? Because I have uh, been very close with a person who is uh, who has seven planets retrogrades. Woo! And non, no, no one was writing about this. I knew that uh, studying astrology, I can do interpretation of charts for anyone. For this person, mm -hmm. none of this works. Like it's like always like the opposite or I, I say whatever and this person will say, well, that's bullshit. Like, and, and so what? Like, like, this, there is no, there was no value in um, whatever bit of uh, tidbit of uh, interpretation I could, mm -hmm. I could give him. 
Um, so I have like, uh, okay, I have found one person, but this is not satisfactory. He only found a uh, few people with seven, uh, six retrogrades, which, and one of them was actually five retrogrades. So he only found one and mm -hmm. said that uh, if anyone with seven retrogrades is being born and they are sure born, but so very, very rarely, mm -hmm. and they must be like completely strangers, aliens, etc., like <laughs> totally different people. So I was like fired up to make the research, uh, yeah. to make my own statistics for the uh, entire uh, 21 centuries of, uh, of our era and have uh, also uh, interview some people with six retrogrades and seven retrogrades. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So basically what, what is seen in the screen is uh, the result of the statistics, mm -hmm. which says that uh, to have no planet retrogrades, uh, it's about seven, eight percent chance. So mm -hmm. you are very rare if you don't have planet retrogrades. So to have any planet retrograde, it's 92, 93%. So most, almost all of the charts have at least one planet retrograde, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I'm counting here our uh, uh, eight modern planets. So uh, five classical planets, uh, Mercury to Saturn, plus mm -hmm. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh, if you have one planet retrograde, it's 19% of the time. So, I mean, one, one, nine, nine, mm. nine right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I need to be precise with this. Um, when you have two, it's 29%. Uh, when you have three, it's 26%. So if you have either three or two, mm -hmm. you are 56% of population. So most of the people have two or three planets because That's two a general. Two, yeah, so two mm -hmm. and three are, you know, next to each other uh, arithmetically, so we can treat it as, as a group. So yeah. for me, if someone has two or three planets retrograde, they are the normal, the so-called norm. So whatever these people live, think, etc., mm -hmm. they set the standards. And if someone has no planet retrogrades, these mm -hmm. two and three retrograde people would think he's stupid or strange or weird or I, I don't like him or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, or if someone has more, then similarly. Mm -hmm. But so, so more than three. If you have four planets retrogrades, it's 20, uh, 20, uh, 12, sorry, or actually 13, 30% of time, mm -hmm. one three, mm -hmm. uh, which is still a kind of big, kind of small. So four retrogrades uh, differ. Either other, they could be weird or quite normal, depending which planets are retrograde and other factors in the charts. Okay. But, but starting from five planets retrograde, it's only 4% chance you have planets retrograde or 4% mm. of people uh, being born are uh, in, in longer periods of time mm -hmm. uh, have this, this many planets retrograde. And to have six, seven planets retrograde, it's 0. 0.00 points mm. percent. Mm. So um, I have uh, uh, counted, for example, also the astrologers. So I have a sampling of uh, uh, a couple short from thousand astrologers from Astro Data, Data Bank, and mm -hmm. zero of them had seven. The rest of the numbers kind of are similar to the uh, normal distribution, what you would expect statistically to have this or that number of planets, but a bit more people among the astrologers have one planet retrograde, mm. a, bit, a bit more have zero retrogrades, uh, and, and the, we have a bit um, less people with standard three retrogrades. So astrologers are a little bit uh, retrograde weirder, so to say, but not so much. Uh -huh. um, so this is the statistic and uh, we can switch to this uh, table of the centuries to show you more, more to describe it more exactly. So each, each line is a century and the, the columns are the decades. I mean, it's about <laughs> uh, seven retrogrades oh, going, okay, so uh, seven at the best. same time. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the table just for seeing how actually rare are, are, are those. So each century has uh, 36,500 something days. So in the first century, there's zero retrogrades. So there are oh. some centuries where there are no planets retrograde. We can That's have even 
up to uh, uh, 244 years without uh, seven retrogrades. And uh, the most that are retrograde us for per centuries are, you know, it's usually between like uh, three, one and nine days per entire century. So it's like very small, like 0 0.00, etc. percent. The most was, uh, let me see, for 64 days in three periods uh, in the uh, fourth century. Yes, yeah, so I can for, see that. Yeah. Okay. There's so a for lot. example... Yeah, Bunched. so, so <laughs> they are really uh, weird people, like very unexceptional in some way, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so, for example, now we have 20th century. So the last time, let me see exactly the dates. In 1944, in January, we had four days of retrograde planets. And then again, in 1984, uh, between the end of uh, April and beginning of May, we had also five days of seven retrogrades, and again, mm -hmm. two and a half days in the summer of 1986. And that's mm -hmm. it in the entire century. So, uh, the people that can be alive today mm -hmm. and have seven retrogrades had to be born within uh, these uh, 13 days, right? Wow, okay. So, they are yeah, very yeah. rare. So if so, my mother was born in, like, for instance, she was born in 1921, she'd be that 1900 line, the 20th century, and there was only 12 days in that century that any planet went retrograde. Am I reading that right? When yes. all, all, so, all sorry, all. The, the maximum seven, because we, so this table shows that only seven can be retrograde at the same time. We never mm -hmm. seen eight retrograde at the same time in the entire, you know, 20 uh, or 21 centuries and we will not see them for at least uh, uh, 25 centuries technically it's possible like mm -hmm. astronomy wise to have eight retrogrades but it didn't happen yet uh, as much as uh, our uh, western culture is alive all right okay wow amazing okay mm -hmm. yeah so the next time seven planets will go retrograde is in the next century. So like actually 21st century. So I think we already are there yet. It's in 2080s and just three days. So uh, some of us might uh, be alive. <laughs> not, not many though. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also an interesting situation uh, when you look at only classical planets. So we have five classical planets that go retrograde yeah. and it's mm -hmm. much more rarer. But indeed, you can have all five planets go retrograde. So it's so I think this shows a bit uh, more uh, how it's more idealistic system because like you can have these retrogrades, uh, all of them retrograde. And for example, the last time um, the five planets were retrograde was in uh, 16th century. Okay. So mm -hmm. so so far ago. Uh, uh, so we will show one chart, that, but uh, the next time it will happen, uh, it will be 2076, mm -hmm. but the uh, very next one would be in the same century, uh, 2082, mm -hmm. when five planet classical will go retrograde, but at the same time, seven planets uh, of all our modern planets will go retrograde. So I think this will be a special point first. Mm -hmm in entire era so something interesting should happen at this point or end or switch or i don't know maybe one mm -hmm. of those end of the world or whatever yeah. <laughs> let's hope not <laughs> yes yeah, so uh let's go to the uh nostradamus chart okay right this is our man nostradamus very uh easy chart to read because uh, we have sun exactly on the mc so mm -hmm. our sun is on top of the chart so mm -hmm. it's very easy to imagine, you know, the half of the chart, top top half with the sun, would be mostly direct planets, except Mercury and Venus. And mm -hmm. in this chart, Mercury and Venus are both retrogrades. Yes, I can see that. Mm -hmm. And on and the on the opposite side of the sun, uh, any planet there would be retrograde. And here we have the rest of the classical planets: Mars retrograde, Jupiter retrograde, Saturn retrograde. All yeah. very close to the, uh, not more far away than eight degrees from the IC, and mm -hmm. Sun is on the MC. So they are all opposite the Sun. So very bright, very uh, you know, very important point uh, in the solar cycle. Mm -hmm. And also uh, Mars, Jupiter, 
and Saturn, they rule every other planet in the chart and uh, the Ascendant. So they are like, the, the retrogrades are like ruling this chart. Okay, uh, and that's example, because this Ascendant is in the sign of Aries and the planet that rules that is Mars. Is, am I reading yes, that right? Yes, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to, sorry, interrupt you for a second. Nostradamus was a, a, a famous French astrologer who wrote a whole load of books. And one of the books, the, the, there's a lots of books theory, but the thing is he wrote a lot that then was interpreted as things like predicting the Second World War and Hitler and stuff like that. I mean, obviously he wrote it in rather flowery language. However, an awful lot of things that he predicted, and quite a lot of things were wars and uh, sort of scary stuff like that. But the things that he's predicted have come true. Now, it depends what you classify as a prediction and what you classify as coming true. But he's most famous for being an astronomer, astrologer that was pretty good at prediction. Yeah, is that right? He, yeah, I would say he's um, uh, he was for, for, for a long time very um, popular and actually the only name of astrologer uh, people who know nothing about astronomy or like Ptolemy or figures like that would know they just know all oh, Nostradamus like yeah the, the mm -hmm. astrology etc so, so he was like a sim 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 symbol for many what 1503 he's born long time ago yeah is uh, that right yes yes 21st of December 1503 so this this isn't somebody that was born yesterday this is an old chap but it's a yeah. one fact that we look at his chart there and that's yeah, but... the moon in sign so he's got sun in Capricorn on the MC and then his moon is in the sign of uh, of Aquarius, but for retrogrades, we don't really care about the moon. So uh, no. Venus is in, uh, in Aquarius, Mercury is in Sagittarius, uh, nine house, so where uh, astrologers were put in traditional mm -hmm. astrology. Mercury was also the uh, planet of astrologers. So we have very, very weird or very spiritual symbolic astrologer here, right? Yeah. And Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn are near the IC in Cancer. So Mars is in fall. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, Jupiter is in exaltation, and Saturn is opposite uh, his home. So mm -hmm. all of these planets are either very uh, excited or very distressed, and also mm -hmm. opposite the uh, Sun and retrograde. So Saturn is the straight, so difficult, long things. Uh, long periods of time and Mars is wars, Jupiter is big things, flashy, etc. So all of them together and you have the Nostradamus like predicting wars mm -hmm. and things like that for the entirety of almost like future and very cryptic, retrograde, non everyone's tried to decipher it or say, oh, he did predict uh, World Trade Center fall or this or that. Mm. But it's not, it's never set straight uh, in his... Um, in his writings, it's always uh, more like um, poems, yes, about poetry, science, yeah. etc. Mm. So, um, yeah, but he also, except for that, he, because he had many retrogrades, this is probably why he was researching the retrogrades and he was the author of uh, uh, updates for uh, planetary tables because retrograde periods were outdated at his time. Is it? Oh, okay, yeah. right. Ooh. I like his part of fortunes quite uh, in the sign of Taurus. I don't know if that's helpful there, but it's probably helped his finances a bit. He didn't appear to <laughs> yeah. die starving yeah. in a garret somewhere. He was quite successful. I mean, son on the MC, one's going to be really focused on one's career, isn't one? Um, he was obviously a career astrologer. He wasn't just doing it quietly. He was uh, mm -hmm. making some money from it, making a name. You know, son on the MC would be just a famous and important figure. So mm. he was one, mm. or or have dealt with important figures mm. like kings, etc. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just uh, jump to Michael's chart just to show you the example of someone born with uh, seven planets retrograde? So Yay! being this this zero point zero zero five percent of population. So he uh -huh. was born in uh, uh, on the thirtieth uh, of April, nineteen eighty four. So within this couple of days, that seven planets were retrograde and since I was talking about this chart so many times I'm not quite sure what to focus about but probably what I usually did is uh, he has sun and moon in Taurus mm. in 11th house the moon is uh, approaching the sun so it's invisible so it's one of those uh, combust planets so okay. uh, mm -hmm. even the moon makes him 
better not share how he does things at jobs or whatever because people would just try to you know destroy him mentally or or financially or otherwise mm -hmm. So he's got Cancer Ascendant, he's got Sun and Moon in Taurus yeah. in the 11th. Okay, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, the, in the 10th house, Aries, he has uh, Venus, which is the only direct planet, and Mercury, which is retrograde, and it's the same degree uh, as Venus. Mm -hmm. So it makes Venus even a bit more retrograde because it's conjunct uh, retrograde planet. And they are also very close to the Sun, even though they are the uh, next sign they are also both combust. So he's the example of the person who... Ha and this is 10th house, like I was mm -hmm. saying. 11th mm -hmm. house is another house that is a bit uh, co correlated with uh, what you do because it's uh, the gains or things that come from the 10th house because it's second house from the 10th. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so for sure, with the, those uh, three signatures relating to the sun being combust, uh, 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 related to the job, he had very very different situation and jobs he was always a revolutionarist wherever okay. he went the business would always strive but he would always be like forced to resign because he couldn't cope with uh, you know toxicity or like hate mm. or, or things like that or uh, everything he knew is obvious for everyone is no we do it differently no, like so it's it's even if no one was like um, uh, after him, literally, mm -hmm. he like, couldn't cope with people just doing their, you know, this labyrinth maze, like, oh, we have to turn right, left, blah, blah, blah. And he was, no, just go outside the maze and take this. I already did it. No, 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 I have to go through the maze and see myself. Oh, oh wow. so, uh -huh. so very, very frustrating. But uh, opposite uh, the sun in Taurus, mm -hmm. in Scorpio, he has three planets retrogrades. Mm -hmm. Mars, Saturn, and Pluto, so all three uh, bad planets. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Scorpio, which is a bit bad sign, right? So uh, No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, let's not discriminate against Scorpio as a sign. <laughs> but yeah, I was joking. No, uh, I'm just yeah. making simplification because yeah. we're running out of time. Yeah. So uh, the Saturn from among these three retrogrades in Scorpio is actually... A directly opposite the sun. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have sun opposite the retrograde planets mm -hmm. and Saturn among the retrograde planets is the most difficult one yeah. for the materialistic mundane things because it will make your life a hell literally. Mm. Like everything is so long, the loop is so long, the retrograde loop, like everything uh, you, uh, for example, he would say some things to people, they will call him idiot, etc. Mm -hmm. Ten years later, come to him, tell him the same things, mm -hmm. and all, again call him stupid, and he was like, Matt, I already told you this ten mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. and you call me idiot, etc., or whatever and mm -hmm. you, you made my life a hell and they're like oh like stop with your and, and they are attacking again so things like that so you know saturn can be like uh, grandfathers or or, or or people or sam saturn can be fatherly relation and um saturn is kind of related with doing a job as well so job troubles again so like he has quite a struggle to uh, uh, not think he's like um, he's insane because he knew things since he was a child. Since his childhood he knew certain things will happen and of course with retrogrades decades had to pass or at least some years but everything happened the way he imagined he only like didn't know when it will happen or things like that. Okay. Uh, so he knew if someone would broke up with someone, etc., mm. or this company will uh, just do this or that, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, he never, you know, ca can just like uh, take actions because retro so many retrogrades make him, you know, go into such loops and maze that even though he knows uh, uh, how to go behind uh, the uh, labyrinth. Mm. Uh, He's like in the in the sea, and the waves get him left, right, etc. He still sees the thing, but 
So it's like he's working against the energy of the universe in a way. Yes, exactly. Oh, sorry, so, not universe, the humanity, because humanity mm -hmm. wants to do it this way. And he he sees that it's possible to do it another way. So he's working against humanity, but maybe he's working maybe with a higher plane or something. Is that the thing? Because if you were thinking yes, at a spiritual level, I, all that challenge. Yes, yeah? I would say so. And when I compared other people that had seven retrogrades, uh, so were born on the same day or day before or after, I have mm -hmm. like three or four chats of those people. The situation is the same. Like they go to a business, the business is, is making like almost millions and their life is a hell. They have to go away. They have almost uh, uh, no friends because everyone is... Uh, uh, like a leech or either wants to punish them or wants something from them to help them solve the problems to then blame him for not solving them the perfect way etc like um he'd be better yeah, off so, being oh, yeah, so go employed, wouldn't they? working for himself you know when you've got that type of a yeah. chart you, you need to work for yourself rather than work for someone else exactly possibly. but also yeah. saturn, saturn retrograde it's a quite difficult to have the uh, the discipline mm. because maybe oh let's say one important thing that retrograde planets uh, you could use also a keyword that uh, you get disappointed with and then so for example Saturn is a planet of structures mm -hmm. so you get disappointed with any structures either it's you're trying to make a structure in your life materialistic or uh, any jobs or like uh, clerics, people working in government, etc. Mm. Or, for example, uh, broken promises is one ex key example for Saturn retrograde, if it's important, for example, mm -hmm. opposite the sun or something like that. Mm. So going back to the spirituality, um, that's why I kind of call seven retrogrades people, also six retrogrades a bit as well. Kind of like an equivalent of uh, the old souls in the mm -hmm. age of the soul theory, or in the numerology, how are called the numbers are 11 or oh, uh, master numbers 11, mm -hmm. 22, etc. And Michael, for example, has master number 11 also. So, uh, how they are, I'm not saying it's like uh, validating that or similar, similarity or even uh, numerology, etc., but the way they are described and what I see in seven retrogrades kind of seem like uh, they're trying to describe the same. Uh, unusualness of the people and mm -hmm. now I'm coming back to the spirituality so uh, because every planet uh, almost every planet is retrograde so going against the grain making mm. loops seeing things differently going mm. like I said um, uh, uh, ascending towards like being more spiritual and just observing instead of being caught up in mundane like the majority people like with two and three retrograde planets mm -hmm. so uh, everywhere they are they happen to be they mm -hmm. call friction because like it's almost like the laws of physics would go crazy mm -hmm. for example mike for many years had trouble because electronics would just broke right. just by him touching someone has a <laughs> an old phone that is i don't know 10 years old uh -huh. has something my, my mike takes the phone and the telephone dies well. like that. yeah so uh, <laughs> so he had very, very many things uh, he had to replace um mm. uh, uh, so and same with people like they attract broken people like uh, there are many people with six retrogrades that are uh, circled uh, by uh, approached by many drag addicts that are mm -hmm. just you know beyond saving and they just glue to these uh, souls because they probably because they are you know their brains are uh, turned off because of you know troubles or addictions or 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 playing the victim or something like that they kind of can sense oh this person is different maybe i mm -hmm. should try leech on them and mm -hmm. uh, have some gain from that uh so let me mm -hmm. also uh as we are here give you the quote i just constructed from uh, all the interviews with people with seven retrogrades and six, ret six retrogrades because mm -hmm. most of them uh, during the interviews said similar things so right. the sum, so so the ideal quote for this would be uh, uh so person with many retrograde speaking i feel 
like I'm from some other planet or another reality. Mm -hmm. I see this word like I'm in front row of a circus where people do strange things over and over like a hamster in a wheel. Mm -hmm. And they are not able to see beyond what they do. I can't help anyone because they can't understand what I mean. And usually they will express being mad at me for saying mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. uh, or they will ignore me totally or just treat me as I need psychological treatment. So I keep most of the stuff I see for myself. Mm. So you will see that people who have uh, this many retrogrades would not would be very private about what they really think and what they really say. Yeah, they will kind they will kind of be forced to put some persona to even have uh, friends or uh, you know be able to uh, do a lot of things in life. Mm. Yeah. So they're they're going to they're not going to be out in the mainstream then. Well, hopefully they're not running countries. So I hope we haven't got too many <laughs> prime ministers that have got that amount of retrograde planets because they're going to do things differently. It's interesting. Yeah. It is true that I I I'm a believer that your retrograde planet will attract to you issues to do with that planet until you've resolved them, and it is possible to resolve how a retrograde planet is. You know, using. Um, I don't know, magic or methods or or sort of remedies in some way. It is possible to to make it better. It doesn't have to be a cause of suffering forever. But then that depends how how open you are to being able to resolve that this time round. Because somebody might need to reincarnate again. You know, I was uh, talking last week about karmic astrology. Maybe um, Michael, in his case, has chosen this lifetime that is so challenging for him for a specific reason because his previous one was nice and easy. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to have a challenge this time. Time. we don't know um but i think sometimes you will attract to you your retrograde planet wherever it is issues to do with it until you go aha that's not me that's my planet and that's not who i am because you can't mm -hmm. have the sun the sun can never retrograde the moon can never retrograde mm -hmm. so we're always going to be projecting onto others the issues to do with our retrograde planets but once we take it back to ourselves and say it's not them it's me it's my retrograde bloody planet i'm gonna just own it in some respects maybe that's i don't know it's a rhetorical mm -hmm. question but maybe that's a, a solution or a way forwards for someone so uh, in terms of remedies of course there's it's um, a matter of opinion if you like believe in them or not so yeah. i'm not uh, giving this answer but i would say that if they work for people with many retrogrades these are the normal uh, remedies mm -hmm. so they probably won't work for, sure. for, for those folks and what works for them is just do their own thing yeah not not share what they uh, so most of them because of these struggles would really mm -hmm. want someone to understand them to say they are not stupid etc and the best thing uh, uh they can do before they uh, uh achieve it themselves mm -hmm. which actually anyone could do every everyone should do but um, um that's another thing uh, in the meantime, just uh, if they can take it for uh, sort of granted that uh, it won't happen, so I am mm -hmm. not expecting it, I am learning to not need, uh, not have to need uh, to be uh, accepted by society okay. the way I am. So I mm. have my ways, mm. I just do my things, don't ask for opinions, etc. because... Uh, it's almost like asking for, for trouble or to be hurt emotionally. Mm. So mm. if they are able to uh, embrace and uh, not want attention, mm -hmm. which attention is always something that uh, they'll be quick, uh, uh, that is part of the box for them. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Thank you. So we are already uh, past the one hour mark, but uh, I know you... Uh, so I'm happy. I will, I, will, I will cover some uh, some stuff like perfection, etc. So let's not waste this. Mm -hmm. So what we do with retrogrades? Because we have covered something about natal charts, but yes. we all know that red planets are going direct or retrograde all the time. I've mm -hmm. shown you the tables how often they go retrograde or not. Uh, oh no, actually I haven't. So let's just say quickly that Mercury goes retrograde 90% of the time. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so three times a year, sometimes four times a year. Venus goes uh, retrograde seven percent of the time, but it's every ninety months. So mm -hmm. not every year, but within two years, you have one Venus retrograde. Mars the same. It goes mm -hmm. retrograde around um, uh, two years. I mean, between each retrograde is about two years. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's uh, twenty-five months, so it's nine percent of the time. So 9% chance of having mass retrograde, right? Okay. Uh, Jupiter is 30%, Saturn 35%, and Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, all three have 40% of chance being retrograde. Mm. And... Yeah, because I, yeah, yeah. I was looking at the cycle of Venus retrograde because it's, it's oh, Venus yeah. is retrograde in Gemini at the moment. And when I was just checking this week, because I'm writing my uh, column for the, um, my newsletter, that uh, Venus is retrograde at the moment in the sign of Gemini. And I checked and found, I was so happy, I found a retrograde Venus ephemeris and said that the last time it went retrograde was eight years ago. And it's an eight-year cycle that mm -hmm. Venus will retrograde in the same sign. Yeah. So I thought, well, that's yeah. interesting. I, that, I, that again, because it's it only we've been having this discussion about retrograde planets, I wouldn't even investigated it. But because this month now, June, we've got six of the planets, and that's what I was getting all excited about. Well, oh, we're going to have six retrograde planets this month. This is why this podcast yeah, exactly. is happening because we need to, as human beings, be able to understand how to cope with it. And I love these words: you know, disobedience and disappointment. You know, and disagreement is is almost as if you stick dis in front of it. Was well, yeah. mm -hmm. retrograde? I was talking about retrograde merge just redo rethink but with this we have to add dis in and you know there is an english word that it's called dis don't dis me it's like don't um disrespect me because you know that's that's mm -hmm. a, another thing but i yeah i love the words with it so it's 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 totally changed how i'm thinking about retrograde planets now it's a very very interesting conversation we're having let's keep in mind moon and jim i'm very happy <laughs> so i'll be guided by you go on uh-huh Okay, so to comment on, on this thing, so first, uh, Venus retrogrades, uh, as I said, it goes retrogrades every uh, 19 months, but in different sign each time, but uh, every eight years, the retrogradation is in the same sign, roughly in the same degree, mm -hmm. and roughly uh, with the same relation to the sun. So, and at the same time, Venus going retrograde actually draws a five-pointed star on, um, on the zodiac. So, like, the point, it goes retrograde in Gemini, then here, and here, and here. And if you point, uh, and if you uh, draw the lines, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's a five-pointed star, and, uh, you know, That's it just keeps crazy. going back yeah. to the same degree. It just shifts a little bit, so... After a few years, it's not like three uh, degree of the sign, but uh, I don't know, a little bit this or that way. Yeah, because I saw that on Erin Sullivan's page once. She'd done this lovely, I don't know where she'd got it from, but it was this pretty sort of picture that she got. It's in one of her books because she's she's written a book about retrograde planets. And uh, and, the, and this picture, and I was fascinated. I think, really? Is that how the orbits go, you know, through the science? And yeah. it just makes this beautiful, beautiful um, shape. So, you know, yeah, I was, I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, so because it's a, ph a phenomenal of visual astrology, retrogrades, I have so much deep gems. Uh, if you just dig or so you could make like 20 episodes of uh, different uh, parts of what's interesting about retrogrades right mm -mm -mm. Uh, so uh, and another thing uh, to comment on so we have retrogrades uh, in May we had one two three four retrogrades at the same time in June we have five then we will have also uh, keep having at least three or four until October and Mid September to fourteenth uh, October of November, so half of September, October, and half of November, Mars is retrograde. So this will be so mm -hmm. this will be uh, the most probably difficult moment. Which month? I'll, July or which month? Did you uh, say September? Yeah, the red box. So the Mars when right. Mars goes retrograde because. Uh, Mars is quite fast planet, so when it's in Aries, it goes almost to the end of Aries, but then mm -hmm. decides to go retrograde, 
So before he goes direct again and leaves the areas, it stays for so long, several months in areas. So, and Mars in areas is very strong Mars. So we can yeah. expect, I don't know if something with virus or wars or politics or whatever. Well, we've but, got lots of but, rioting going on at the yeah. moment. So maybe that, it's not rioting, protesting, wrong word. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This should be some heating moment when, when people or organization or countries put a lot of energy more than they were supposed to or like like something just consumes uh, mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. um, and what else I wanted to say? Oh, yes. So uh, natal charts we were talking about. This is the transits or mundane astrology. But what for uh, your own predictions. So a few words what you can do with retrograde planets because as I said it's a piece of cookbook astrology that is always important if the planet is retrograde or not. So okay. elections, horary, transits and uh, predicting your future you always have at least usually one planet retrograde so you should pay attention what one is retrograde. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> In terms of predictions, uh, what I prefer to do, and I think it's really easy for people to, to follow, even though it's, you know, ancient astrology, uh, very complicated, etc. But uh, if you take the gist of it, it's quite simple. So uh, that's why I asked you to uh, make sure people are on the same page what the perfections are. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when you are, uh, your ascendant perfects, uh, you are, I don't know, five years old, so it perfects to your uh, <coughs> sixth house, right, mm -hmm. etc. Or then 12 years later, it's also in the sixth house. And say uh, this house is um, Aries. Okay. So when you have your birthday, you look at your solar return and you look, where is my Mars? And oh, it's retrograde. Okay. This year might be a bit weirder or, uns, you know, something might surprise me a, a bit more mm -hmm. comparing to the previous years of perfected areas when uh, Mars was uh, direct, etc. Right. OK. But uh, mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. But also uh, throughout the year, you are looking at your ascend perfected ascendant ruler. So for areas perfections, you will be most interested in Mars. Like mm. if you have, I don't know. Uh, you know, looking at all the transits, it's uh, exhausting. There are so many planets, so many combinations, like 10 or something uh, times 10 planets, uh, NATO, that's so much. If you want to just like take some uh, something small, just focus on your uh, perfected ascendant ruler. So Mars, for example, if you are in perfected areas and especially look if this year this planet goes retrograde and when. Because right. at this point, there will be change, important change. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we all already covered the, uh, uh, the uh, keywords so you can expect like this, 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 and mm. connect with, with your houses, planets, etc. Mm -hmm. um, or ex expect some slowness, disappointment, making some loop. And a funny thing to use is to uh, see the dates when it goes retrograde mm -hmm. and when it goes direct. Mm -hmm. See what degrees are those, mm -hmm. and then see when it passes through the same degree within this year. So when it's catching up, it covers the same degree. Before it go retrograde, it will pass a certain degree. It will go retrograde at certain point, mm -hmm. and you can kind of do uh, like a, a visionary board and mm -hmm. draw arrows between those dates when it's in the same degrees and there should be some similarities or returning to some point or issue etc so it might help you with whatever happened these years to kind of uh, brainstorm what comes from where and when it might re, uh, resurface again etc Okay, and it's always the chart really, because I was saying on the podcast on uh, the weekend just gone that that I've got a Leo ascendant, so the the sun is the ruler to Leo ascendant, but the sun can uh -huh. never go retrograde. So, but I just yes. need to see where the sun is. So maybe I'm a lucky bunny because, <laughs> but that's only when it comes to me being sixty now. So that's the ruler to it. But next year I'll be sixty one, obviously. Then there'll be a, a different ruler to my ascendant. My ascendant will still be the same, surely. But mm -hmm. it'll be in a it'll be in the next house. Is that right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, mm -hmm. so the next house is Virgo, and the ruler to that is Mercury. So next year, so Mercury can... will go retrograde three times. It will three times. A year, yeah. So it will be uh, more short, weird things. Then, mm -hmm. for example, with Saturn retrograde, uh, when it's your perfected uh, ruler. Yeah. So, so in other words, called the Lord of the Year mm -hmm. uh, for your solar year. Uh, it stays almost in the same degree and it just goes retrograde. So retrogradation is almost uh, the main point of uh, uh, Capricorn and Aquarius uh, perfections for Saturn. Yeah, because they really mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because that was yeah. the thing. Sorry to interrupt. The thing I wanted to ask when I was doing the podcast was that are you saying that the year begins on the solar return or does the year begin on the 1st of January? Because when I was looking at uh, Chris's uh -huh. um, chart thing, it was like, well, I'm, and I'd mentioned on the podcast that if I'd died before my birthday, I legally would have died age 59, but I've got past my birthday, my solar return now. So I'm legally actually 60 because I can't pass my birthday. But I remember when my father died, what the date that they put on uh, his um, tombstone, he hadn't made it to 60, he was legally 59 because they just put the year of death, they don't put the age, do you know what I mean? And so that was my question, when you're doing the perfection and you're looking at the ruler and the lord and whatever, are you saying it has to be after the birthday? Because what happens if you're born in December? Are you doing it from the December this year until mm -hmm. the following year? Is it true that it's the solar return or the beginning of the year? Yes, yeah, so it's definitely solar return because right. uh, in astrology, generally, <laughs> we don't care about the, the year. Uh, Gregorian calendar. Mm. And the beginning of the calendar has changed many times. So uh, we only, uh, of course, we have, for example, like birthday of the universe, which is either uh, 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 spring uh, equinox or uh, winter solstice, depending mm -hmm. or, or, or any other of the four tropics. But for all the people, your birthday is the start of the year of your life. So every uh, every perfection mm -hmm. actually consists of 12 sub periods. So like uh, the ascendant travels one sign per year of your life. Mm -hmm. Within each year, it also starts from the same sign and travels one sign per month. Okay. And so uh, it always has to be a roughly the same amount of time. So roughly a year, each perfection is a year. OK, and so this month we're in now when we're going to be having five or six planets, whatever it is, that are going to be retrograde. I think it's six, but we're going to have quite a lot of planets retrograde. So there's going to be a lot of people that are listening. Some of those planets will be rulers to mm -hmm. some segment of their chart. And that's where you're saying that's where they need to look, especially if it's a slow moving planet like Saturn or Uranus. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pluto can go retrograde for bloody ages. It can go retrograde for mm -hmm. a for quite a few months. So that's then that planet that is now retrograding in the house, that's where you'd have to worry. So if it was in the sixth house, it's like, oh, I better look after my health. If it's seven, I better not punch my boyfriend. If it's the 10th, I better look after my career. Is that how it would work? That's because that's where it's going to be stationed in retrograding. Is that right? The planet um, you're looking at now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, not sure if I understand, but uh, let's try to uh, answer what I think are a few questions you are asking so uh -huh. uh, or maybe clarifying something that I think might not be very clear from mm -hmm. what I had said so uh, if everyone doing checking what is their uh, perfected ascendant yeah and this sign is activated so it's your sign of the year right mm -hmm. so you are interested whatever happens with this sign as well as the ruler so I was saying about tracking your ruler when it yes. changes signs, when it goes retrograde, etc. Mm. This will be very important this year for you, more than mm. any other transits. But also to check whatever is transiting through this mm -hmm. sign or aspecting this sign. Obviously, oh, okay. you have to make some um, uh, some choices, like every Mercury or Moon aspect is not that important, but if Saturn makes an aspect, or especially if planets travel through your perfected ascendant that's important and if mm -hmm. they happen to be retrograde yeah even more so okay and another thing i would also look at the angular uh, signs from the perfected ascendant so mm -hmm. the opposite sign and squaring signs yeah but this the same thing with your natal chart so you have your natal ascendant which is mm -hmm. the same for your entire year, uh, life Mm -hmm. And also four angular uh, signs and yeah. whatever happens in those four signs also is important. So if retrograde stuff happens there, especially 
on your solar return because whatever happens on your solar return stays true for entire year. So it's the yeah. most important transit. Uh -huh. And does so, Astro.com have that whole perfected thing in there? Can you use that in it? I haven't found it on there. I don't know. It might be. Maybe I haven't checked all the charts because it's got a lot of uh, info on there. Mm -hmm. have you, I mean, you might not know the answer to the question, but I'll have to check through it. Can you make it? Can you do you sort of what does an astrologer do that does perfections? Do they make a perfected chart or they just work out in the head using the table that I use? No, it's it's the easiest to do it in your table because you oh, just, okay. uh, for example, count the, the years. Like I literally sometimes when I uh, have someone's chart in front of me and don't care about, uh, don't remember if, if that the tenth house is always 31st, third birthday, etc. So I just like count. Oh, I don't know how many years old the person is, but I know mm -hmm. their birthday, so I count. Oh, they're born in '94, so '94, '95, '96, etc. And I just count the years until I reach, you know, the current year, and I'm sure, like it's double checking for me because sometimes this uh, ordinal numbers and cardinal numbers can be confusing. Like zero years is first sign; it might be confusing for people, and you know, I'm not perfect with math, so. Mm -hmm. uh, neither am I. <laughs> so, so usually, so usually we just uh, we just count what sign is uh, uh, is, is is perfected, mm -hmm. uh, which is you know just counting in twelves. Right. Actually, yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing uh, I might mention is we can also look at progressions, and mm -hmm. if you have retrograde planets at some points in in a time, they go direct. And progressions are, you know, whatever happens three days after your birth is whatever would happen in your life when you are three years old. So if, uh, for example, your Mercury is retrograde and goes direct three days, yet, uh, three days uh, later, mm. when you are three, something weird might happen Yes. With, with you and things like that. So these dates can also help you. Yeah, they, exactly. I've covered progressions, and as I say, because I've got Mercury retrograde, and it stopped being retrograde, whatever date, year, or because I was um, born with the sun was fifteen degrees Pisces, and my Mercury's a bit further on from that. But there is a point where that planet in a progression starts to go forwards, and I haven't checked it for ages. I'll have to have a look and see what happened to me that age. You know, did something happen to me when I, I think it was in my teens? Actually, I think it's when I moved to Switzerland. But that that was however many days is the year that I am now. Yeah, I've and I cover that when I'm teaching astrology, the progressions are interesting. But however, having said that, in, in astrology, it's a bit like going down the rabbit hole because you can go down into these deep mm -hmm. things you can find in this side and it's like, uh, oh, I'm supposed to be doing a, a reading for a client. You know, it's like, oh, I find all this yeah. stuff. And I do that when I'm writing charts for people because I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Like this in there, 50 pages later. And you know for sure they're not going to read it all because they're going to die of boredom or something. But you as the astrology, it's so exciting to be able to find these things out. But yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> there's quite a lot that we we could do yeah. but perfections i think i th i hope i um did the correct information when i did the podcast um but I, i've got the hang of it now it it makes sense and this is an ancient um technique but it's quite a, a nifty one uh, because you'll be able to look to see which what is the planet that you need to pay attention to this mm -hmm. that's the you know the the ruler to the sign it, but you are, you are you only using the ancient rulers you're not using the modern ones yes exactly huh Right. Okay. But the mother planet can happen to uh, appear in a perfected sign, so this will make it uh, more uh, um, maybe not important because I don't think of them as super important, but uh, relevant. Okay. So to say right. So if they're not angular uh, um, to the natal chart or angular to the perfected signs, I ignore them. Otherwise, uh, I take a look if they say something interesting or if they add something. OK, lovely. And Gregory, thanks. Do you do you feel that you you covered enough for us to be able to understand? Because we've, we've been through a, a wonderful amount of different information here today. You know, you're a professional astrologer. You're also a graphic designer. You work and live in Poland. You speak beautiful English. And your understanding, uh, you. of, your understanding of retrograde planets was like when I was first reading the articles, go, wow! so interesting you know because it, it is uh, these are things i didn't even know about you know the length of time that is retrograde for you because you just sort of look at astro.com and you see you know and you think that's it but this whole you know discussion that we've had today is just amazing it's like opening pandora's box Woo! you know i'm getting have quite fun with clients now i mm -hmm. can see that do you think there's anything else in particular that we need to know today do you think you've you've covered all the important parts of it well i think it's 
quite enough for people. Um, there are probably some things I would love to add, but you can you can do this forever. <laughs> the only thing might be a few words about horary if yeah. we uh, want to spend a few minutes more. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I just started doing horary. I've done five episodes on it now. I mean, uh, I'm I'm cheating. I'm I'm learning it as I go. Uh, like I started in episode 172. We've done 172, 173, 174, 176 all orary because I just thought that was fascinating that you can ask a specific question like where's my handbag and I did this stupid example I couldn't find my pen and then I used I just literally was reading it in the book like oh my god the pen was here all the time it wasn't even mm -hmm. not in the office it was in a, um, a shelf underneath where I'm sitting it had fallen into a box in there but I thought that was so amazing because I was just reading the book by um Lewis, I think his name's Lewis, and um, it was just amazing. But uh, yeah, tell us, tell us about um, with orary astrology. I'm all ears. Okay, so yeah, it's just just short because um, retrogrades are quite straightforward uh, in horary because in horary we simplify things because we only focus on one question, one detail. So every reading is si simplified. There is no like deeper spiritual like uh, analogies or symbolism no we just want, want to get straight to the sketch straight to the point right mm -hmm. uh, so retrogrades are generally uh, we would use those uh, negative keywords uh, from the ancient and classical authors uh, like especially uh, most of them say that uh, retrograde planet is not effective so whatever is being described as retrograde planet it won't bring the result right mm -hmm. also every other keyword like uh, re-examination so uh, the retrogrades in horary or electional astrology also so when you start something are good for things that are um that need to re something do i get redo if you want to redo something yeah that's a great significator it just shows me about redoing it's not bad that my significator of uh revisiting my childhood home is retrograde it just says so it just mm -hmm. confirms my question etc or if you're looking for a lost object if it's retrograde mm -hmm. it might help you because it shows that oh it's coming back right it's Got it. okay. something comes back yeah yeah but if you want to get rid of something and it's retrograde you won't have that uh, easy time getting rid of it what else okay. clean cleaning revisions etc i'll go with retrogrades otherwise it's all these nasty keywords like ineffective, middling, uh, confusing, uh, rescheduling, people not showing up, mm. uh, pe people being upset, uh, overoccupied with uh, their personal staff. For example, I had a series of horror questions about uh, rescuing cockatoo parrot from uh, from a zoo-like place. And, right. Uh, and there was a lot of question about their health, etc. And always the signification of the owner was Jupiter retrograde. And that we had so much trouble um, finalizing everything mm -hmm. because he was so, like someone, so something happened in his life, etc. And he just like shut off and uh, we couldn't get a hold of him. He was um, making changes every time he was... Uh, uh, uh giving you promises then mm -hmm. uh, pretending it never happened like so the cockatoo retrograde stuff him so the cockatoo parrot was living with this man with the retrograde jupiter is that right did uh, i hear that right he was the owner he was oh, uh, owner not, of the uh, so, so it was you know the, the the zoo like place with lots of birds now now we uh, finally the bird is like safe and even we have saved another one uh, but I, I was so, I don't know, uh, I was angry because every horary chart was, you know, again, retrograde Jupiter opposite something. I was like, ah, ah, ah. Um, but inside I was like, uh, you know, as astrologer, I was happy because, yeah, it shows me the thing, although uh, I cannot give um, any clue like uh, dates or, or answers. But I was <laughs> happy because it shows that ooh, we have problems ahead. Working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think this will be it because we are so one hour and a half already. Yeah. So maybe that's oh, enough. That's but it's fantastic. It's been absolutely lovely speaking with you. So I will put a link to your website. Is it is it is an easy website address to remember? I mean, I'll put a link on yeah, it. Yeah, it's just 
My name is surname, so Gregory Rosek dot com. Aha. Okay, you're dot com. And you do the no. you do graphic mm-hmm. design, graphic design mm-hmm. and astrology. Mm-hmm. So do you do one on one sessions with people? Is that how your astrology works? Okay, and they can uh, book yeah. you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. We'll send some customers your way, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> so thank hopefully you very so. much. Yeah, okay. thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. It was lovely speaking with you. Bye. Yeah, nice to speak with you. Okay. Bye bye now.